baby says, come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. They also say, clap your hands with me. Stump your feet with me. You can shout with me. Just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. We're going to ask that our adult choir come up and give us a selection. Pastor, we got a treat for you on this morning. Hallelujah. They just sung, as I said, bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Now we're going to come back and tell you that he won't fail. Hallelujah. God will never fail. Heaven and earth will pass away but jesus christ won't fail how many believe that how many know that jesus won't fail people might fail but jesus won't fail you might get in your car and turn the ignition on it might fail but jesus won't fail hallelujah Thank you. 
He won't. He won't fail you. He won't. Oh, heaven and earth shall all pass away. Jesus Christ won't fail. Amen again. Amen, like you mean it. He will never fail. Oh, I walk with that every day, every moment, every second, every tenth of a second. I walk with that all the time. He will not. Amen. Mm -hmm. That was good. That was good. And I love to praise the Lord with the young children. That was awesome. Awesome. I love to see children involved. Lord have mercy, Jesus. They have to get it from somewhere because he won't fail. He won't fail. He have, they have to get it from somewhere. And I thank the Lord for being here today and witnessing this praise service. You know, it's nothing like praising God, but when you got somebody to praise him with. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can praise him all by myself, but when I got company, it just look like my feet get lighter. My head get heavier. My heart get warmer and closer to God when I got somebody to praise him with. Do you know how to praise him? I don't know about you. I'm going to praise the Lord. If I have to praise him by myself. Now let's keep on praising him. Why don't we just stand and, and lift him up in praise. How to reach the masses, men of every birth, for an answer, Jesus gave the key, and I, if I be lifted up, from the earth, I'll draw all me you know, unto me. Lift him up, lift him up. Still, he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw me unto me. I owe the world less hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust Him and do not doubt the words that He said. I'll draw all me unto me. Lift him up, lift him up, still he speaks from eternity, and I, uh, if 
for I be lifted up from the earth. I draw me unto me. Don't exalt the preacher. Don't exalt the pew. Preach the God. A simple, full, and free. Oh, and you will find that promise is true. I draw all me you know, unto me. Lift him up. Lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I will me unto me. I'll go all me unto me. I'll go all me unto me. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart be so acceptable unto you, our Father. In Jesus' name, amen. And the entire body of Christ said once more and again, amen. We want to give to you a part three on Fear Not, Little Flock. From Luke, the, our theme scripture comes from Luke 12 and 31. We are going to start reading we have read from verse 31 through 34. We are going to start again from 34 through 40. 34 through 40. Amen, if you please. Amen. Amen. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your lungs be girded about and your lights burning. Let your lungs be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. When he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Bless are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, I come in the third watch 
and find them so. Bless are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not, feel not, little flock, feel not, little flock. One more time now, feel not, little flock. Jesus is on his way back. Don't fear, just serve. You may sit down now. And serve him sitting down. Our God is an awesome God. And I truly thank the Lord for allowing me to be here today to share with you some more ingredients and words to the wise of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who want us to understand treasures are planted in very significant and important places. You just don't throw treasures out in the open. Amen. Anything you treasure, you put it in a very safe place. Matter of fact, that's the same way as with thoughts. You just don't throw thoughts out any kind of way. You put those thoughts in a very safe place. You treasure them in your heart. You see, when Mary received the announcement from the angel Gabriel that she shall be with child, amen, and she'll have a child by the Holy Ghost, she just didn't go spreading it out to the world. She treasured it. She pondered it in her heart. There are just some things you have to be real careful about telling people that you treasure. Because if it's something that you really care about, you don't want it handled any kind of way. So you are very careful about how you hold it in your heart before you share it with whomsoever. So let it be today that we understand that Jesus didn't mean for us to sell out all we had and become poor. He want us to sell out all we have and to become rich. Are you rich in Jesus? If you have Jesus, you have all you need. Because Jesus is the conqueror of conquerors. Amen. Our Bible teaches us we shall conquer because we are in Christ Jesus. And we are more than conqueror. Amen. Don't think yourself you are nothing. You are something. God made you to be somebody and he made you to be as much as you possibly can in him. Whatever you have, sell it out for Jesus. Somebody preached a sermon once, if you are gone out of business, take your signs down. Amen. Some things you used to do, you just don't do anymore. Some things you used to say, you just don't say anymore. Some people you used to associate with, you just don't associate with anymore. Especially if they don't have the treasure that you have. 
Amen. Especially if they are not walking, they walk and talk and they talk that you are walking and that you are talking. Amen. Amen. Because he said in verse 34, 37, he said, blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. You see, a wise servant just doesn't watch for God. A wise servant works for God. Amen. Amen. Give God all that he or she has to the best of his or her knowledge. You see, he didn't call any of us to be supermen or superwomen. He just called us to be servants. If you are a servant of, the, of, of God, he looks at you as the greatest of the greatest is because you don't need a number on your back. You don't need a anything hanging over your head to describe who you are you are who you are because Christ Jesus is a treasure in your heart amen everybody's not going to praise you because you are a preacher because you are a teacher because you are a child of the kingdom but just know that God says the angels in heaven somebody need to hear this the angels in heaven rejoice just because of one sinner fall out of his evil and wicked way. Don't you know that angels are made by God, controlled by God, and they are ministers of God. They are a flaming fire of God. And if there's anything that you don't want around you, he'll send a flaming angel to take it away. Oh, my God is so good. Don't you know he's good? He's good all the time. He said, just by chance now, you are watching for him to come. Be careful about people who are talking about he's coming in 2025. You know, you got some prophets out there talking about they know when he's coming back. He said, be real careful about that. Be real careful because no man know it when the son of God. Even the angels in heaven don't know. So, so be real careful about somebody telling you what day and hour he's going to come. So many have already been confused and knocked out of their game because he hadn't come yet. And just because he haven't come yet doesn't mean he's not coming. Amen. Just because we see everything going on that's going on and wondering why God is letting it go on because he's God and we are not. Amen. Amen. Because he have mercy on the sinner just like he have mercy on the saint. Amen. Amen. I'm glad he have mercy on me. And I read somewhere where his mercy is new every morning. Every morning I wake up with a new mercy. Don't you know we love things that are new? Things that are brand new, the things that are shining, things that look good and, and things that feel good. Don't you know we love that? Don't you know mercy is the best thing you could ever love that being new in your life? Our God knows our hearts and our minds and our souls and our strength. So therefore, we need to know that those things which we have learned of God, we need to do of God. Kind of get somebody. So here is but Apostle Paul saying in Philippians, in our reference scripture, Philippians, the fourth chapter, we look at verse 9. It said, Paul told the church at Philippi, he said, those things, Philippians 4 and 9, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard. Ooh, learn received and heard he's pressing it he's pressing it don't you know everybody in here have learned something and i pray today everybody in here this morning or who may be on our program this morning have heard something good is gonna happen to you just keep on living and do not fear because god said fear not Little flock and seen in me. Ooh, Apostle Paul was awesome. 
He said, that you have seen in me, that you have received from me, that you have heard of me. And God, the God of peace shall be with you. Don't you know you need to treasure peace if you have it in your heart? Because any hour may appear, any moment may appear with something that will disturb you. But if you got peace in God, you don't have to worry about your conditions right now. You can put that praise to God and God let those worries float right on away. He's that kind of God, you know. Isn't he that kind of God? If you don't believe it, he even gave instruction to little Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and 7. The instruction that he gave to Timothy was in 1 and 7. He said, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And of a sound mind. Don't you know that if you are a Christian, you don't claim to be weak? You have power. What kind of power you have? You have Holy Ghost power. Do you see, when the 120 was in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, whoo, they was endowed with power. They were endowed with so much of power until everything about them became so powerful the world didn't understand it. They spoke in different languages of the whole world and the world didn't understand how can these men speak? And they didn't call them all the men, they called them unlearned men. But at the same time, you don't have to be unlearned by yourself you can be unlearned by God and he can give you the power to know who you are it's some people right now are born into this world and trying to find out whether they are a man or a woman whether they are a boy or a girl you ought to know who you are when you come into this world somebody has to make a decision to understand to know that you are a male or, or you are a female and you ought to understand that from day one and you ought to live by that for the rest of your life if you don't live by that then that means that you are rejecting what the truth say Amen. Amen. He said that you have heard and that you have learned and that you have seen in me. Do. In other words, be what you are and fear not, little flock, for it is God's good pleasure to give you these things that you want. In other words, Matthew 5, 33 says, 6 and 33 says, uh, 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 seek not the world, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Don't you know that God knows our needs and our desires? Don't you know that? Don't you know God know what you needed before you woke up this morning? If God didn't know it, he wouldn't have prepared you to have food in your pantry. If God didn't know it, he wouldn't have prepared for you to have clothing in your closets. If God didn't know it, then he wouldn't have a car out in your yard or in your garage. Amen? God knows everything. That's why we are not to play around with God. Either you be godly or you be gone from God. It's one or the other. You can't, there is no in between. You can't, have, you can't get one step in heaven and stay one step out of heaven. You got to either go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. And that's just the Bible, people. I'm not telling you something that's not true. Heaven is real. So is hell. Hell is real. And God didn't make hell in vain. Neither did he make heaven in vain. There's some people out there in hell who deserve to be in hell. And I know there is nobody in hell right now that deserve to be in heaven. Because if they deserve to be in heaven, they wouldn't be in hell. Let's get the record straight right here. It is because you, you can't, you one thing, that's just like words. You can't stop, you can't go and get words you let out. Once words have left your mouth, you can't go and get them and say, come back, I don't want you to say that. Your, your word is gone. 
Amen. Don't, don't, don't you know God knows every heart and every mind and every soul? He said, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. Save the Lord. Let the wicked forsake his way. And our God will pardon him. Amen. If there's any weakness in your heart, you need to go to God. Amen. Yeah, somebody out there got 12 steps, but I got one step. See Jesus. And as I try to close, and it's going to be hard for me to do that, but I've got to do it. Galatians 6 and, oh man, this is a good one. Galatians 6 and 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also what reap. You gonna reap what you sow. If you sow good, you gonna reap good. That's just the truth, the whole truth, and nothing else but the truth. If you out there cutting somebody down, somebody going to cut you down. Some way, somehow. You out there deceiving somebody, somebody going to deceive you. You out there saying that you are all it, somebody is saying the same thing you saying. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Don't think that you can fool God. Don't think that God can't see you. Don't think that you can hide behind a tree because he made the tree. Don't think that you can hide in a cave. He made the cave. Don't think that you can hide in your basement. He made the basement. Don't think that you can hide nowhere because he made the world. And he sits high and he looks down low. And he knows every corner of it. That's why I had to fall out with my evil and wicked ways. I had to do it, church. I had to do it if I wanted to see the Lord. And when I die, that's who I want to see. Because I know one day I'm going to die. I'm going to leave this earth to see you no more unless I see you in heaven. I don't intend to go to hell. I'm not planning for hell. I'm planning for heaven. If you're on board, you ought not to mind saying amen. amen. Because John on the island of Patmos made it very clearly. John says, Revelations 1 and 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. The time is right now. Don't put it off for another day. Don't put it off because you have something you want to get right. Don't put it off because you need to buy you a new suit or a new frock before you come to church. He said, whosoever will, let him come. And he said, if he come, 
He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit say, not the preacher, not the preacher. Let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. See, John had to talk to the churches. There were seven churches of Asia Minor. God told John to talk to. Amen. In Revelations 2 and 7, he said, Tell the church at Ephesus, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. Revelations 2 and 11. He said, the church at Smyrna, tell them he who that have this an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. In Revelations 2 and 17, he said to the church at Pergamos, he said, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. He said in Revelations 2 and 29, at the church at Theotira, he said, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. In Revelations 3 and 6, at the church at Stardust, he said, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirits say unto the churches. And he said, in Revelations 3 and 13, he said to the church at Philadelphia, the law church, the church that dedicated to him loyalty. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirits say unto the churches. And I'm so glad in Revelation 3 and 22, we find two different churches in Revelation 3 in Revelations 3 and 22, in Revelations 3 and 13. Because in Revelations 3 and 13, he said to Philadelphia, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. But in Revelations 3 and 22, he said to the church that said, We got everything, we are rich. We are not poor, but my Bible teaches me, he said, you are wreck, you poor, you miserable, you don't have what you think you have, and without me, you are nothing. Can I get a witness? That was the church at Laodicea, but I'm so glad that his mercy endured forever because he said, I stand at the door. And I knock. If you open up your treasure, I'll come in and I'll sup with you. I'll have a banquet with you you never had before. I'll have a party with you that you will leave dancing and somebody want to know what you're dancing about. You will leave shouting and somebody want to know what you're shouting about. You will leave praising. And somebody want to know what you're praising about. You'll leave looking up toward heaven and somebody want to know what you're looking at. You'll leave telling somebody, I saw a man. He was from Galilee. He saw me in sin and he made me free. Oh, somebody, 
Somebody need to hear the word this morning. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit say. Not what the preacher say, but what the preacher say through the Spirit. Know that the law is all powerful. Know that the law will give you power, to give you power, to come out of your ways. Know that the law will wake you up, will wake you up when you're sleeping. The law will put you to sleep when you want to go to sleep. My God, my God is a good God. That's why the word of God is the best word that I ever had. That's why I'm going to do like Isaiah said. I'm going to do like Isaiah said in 40 and 31. They that wait, you don't hear me. They that wait on the law, are you waiting on it? They that wait, they that wait on the law shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Are you mounting up? Are you sitting up? Are you lying up? Are you shouting up? They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Don't you know an eagle? Don't you know an eagle is a powerful bird? He a powerful bird. He can fly down. He can pick up his prey with his paws. And he can drop it all away from heaven. He know it's dead. He can go down and he have breakfast for the morning. He have dinner for the afternoon. He have supper for the afternoon. And I'm glad my God is a good God. I don't have to worry. I don't have to weary. I don't have to wonder because my God is a good God. Don't you know he's good? All the time. He that hath an ear to hear. He that hath an ear to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. Know that the Lord is in your heart. Treasure him. And do as he would have you to do. Live as he would want you to live. Be as he would want you to be. Because he's a God almighty. Being a God almighty. He said come. Whosoever will. Let him come. If you want to come this morning. If you want to come this morning. If you, if you haven't given your heart to Jesus. Now this is not to come. We're calling you to just to come to be a. A member of new life. You can come and want to be a member somewhere else. You can come and just want to offer your life. To someone. To, to someone who can take it. And do whatever he wants with it. And that's nobody but Jesus. That's exactly what he want you to do. He wants you to come. And offer your life to him. You might want to be a member in another town, in another church. If you want to be a member here, we'll let you be a member here. We'll allow you to be that member here. Because God is not of God of confusion. He's a God of love and affection. 
And we just want you to know he's able right now to deliver you. If we just want you to know our hands are, are out like Jesus' hands would be out saying, come. This is, this is. Yes, yes it is. You may come. Whosoever will. You may come. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving the invitation. Thank you for somebody who somewhere are giving their hearts to you. Especially those things that are so much of a treasure. They are allowing you to take it, Lord, and use it to the best benefit possible. That they may know that their lifestyle is in compliance with your holy word and with joy and peace and harmony forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you. We thank you for your attendance and we thank you for just being a part of God's program. 
Now it is altar call time and we are going to have our altar call. You who may wish to come to the altar may come. And if and only if there may be a special reason you want to come to the altar, you may for a special prayer after the invitation at this moment will end there will be an opportunity for ones who have a special need for prayer and if you have that special need you may remain after everyone have taken their seat you may remain at the altar for a special prayer if there be a need for anyone we just want to extend the invitation as much as possible because we know God is not mocked. And every one of us are going to reap what we sow. If we sow good, we're going to reap good. If we sow evil, we are going to reap evil. So now, Lord, we come with our heads bowed and our eyes closed and our minds lifted toward heaven and with our hearts stayed on you. Because we know that without the heart being fixed, the mind is out of order. And Lord, we want our minds to be in order with you and with your word. We want our minds to be right, Lord, in spite of what anyone or anybody may say or do, Lord. We just want our minds to be right with you. And if our minds are not right with you, Lord, nothing is right in our life that should be right. Lord, we may call it right. But, Lord, if you call it wrong, Lord, we are not comfortable. And we cannot be comfortable until we get right with you. Lord, because it is a personal invitation and we must come on our own, Lord. We do not need anyone to usher us in. We do not need anyone to carry us in, Lord. We need to come to you on our own. And know that you are the God of deliverance. Know that you are the God who can give. And you are the God that can take away and can nobody give back. You are the God that can give and nobody can take it. Lord, we thank you right now for being that kind of God. Because right now we want to give you our lifestyle. Lord, we want to fall out with our ways and fall in with your ways. Because we know that your ways are the ways of eternity. Lord, and we, we want to be in eternity with you one day. We don't want to burn forever, Lord, because that's eternal pain, Lord. And we don't love the little pain like the little pain that we have down here, Lord, on this earth. So when we get beneath this earth, Lord, we want to come out and be above in heaven with you. Because without you, Lord, we can't do nothing no way. Lord, we can't save ourselves. We can't save ourselves from nothing or nobody, but Lord, you can save us from everything. Just like you say, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, just like you saved Daniel in the lion's den. Lord, we thank you right now for being a God of salvation. We need you, Lord. And Lord, Lord, there are so many, Lord, around the altar this morning. Not just this altar, but altars all over the world. Somebody is coming, Lord. Somebody is coming for a need. Somebody is coming for a 
for, for a win, for an outbreak, Lord, of the Holy Spirit upon their life. Somebody coming for a deliverance, Lord, from some sin or from some sickness, Lord. Somebody's coming for a healing, Lord, for some whatever the doctors may have declared. Lord, of uh, whatever that's in their life that they know that is wrong. Lord, we thank you right now for being that God that answers prayers, Lord. And we are praying right now, not just from our lips, Lord, but our heart. Hearts are in fervent prayer right now. Hearts are in fervent prayer right now, Lord. And without, without our hearts being right, Lord, you won't hear us. Lord, we need you, we want, and we love for you to hear us right now. Though we have a prayer list, Lord, somebody have a prayer problem. And somebody needs you, Father. Right now, somebody needs you, Lord. We can't say it enough. We can't be it enough. But we, you are enough, Lord. Once you are in our hearts, Lord, you are enough. We don't need anything else because we know whatever that we have and whatever that we get, we know you can supply. In the glorious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. And amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Air of salvation purchased by God, born of His Spirit, Lord God, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praise in my
Give God the glory. God is able. He's a delivering God. He got the power to give us power. And I'm not going to ignore his power. Because I know sometimes I'm so weak I don't know what to do. But I know my God can lift me up. I don't know about you, but he's my song every day, every moment. God is so good. Amen. At this time now, we are going to ask our ushers and officers to please come. Amen. For our offertory period. You see the Lord is at work. Amen. With these young children being train how to work in God's service. This is what God wants. God won't raise up. He said, I raised me up a nation, didn't he? Amen. So don't worry about this nation, good people. If it look like it's fixing to fall apart, he got another nation. Our offertory scripture is none other than 1 Corinthians the 13th chapter, reading from verse 1 through 8. For it reads, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding breath or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, Though I have all faith, and so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and not have charity and profit me nothing. Charity suffereth long. And is kind. Charity ended. Now charity it not itself. It was not puffed up. Do not behave. It's self unseemly. Seek it not her own. It's not easily provoked. Think it no evil. Rejoice it not in iniquity. But rejoice it in the truth. Beareth all things. Believe it all things. Hope it all things. Endure it all things. Charity never fell it. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. And whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. You may proceed in the lifting of our tithes. Say everybody oh. rise. Everybody rise. Face to the outside. Face to the outside. Starting at the back. Starting at the back. Come to the front. Come to the front. All right. My Lord.
Amen. All rise for the blessing of the offering. And at this particular time, we're going to ask one of our ushers to bless the offering. Father God, we come to give you thanks, Father, once again. We want to thank you for everything, Father God. We ask you to bless this offering, Father, and bless those that gave, and bless those that had a desire that could. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you. God for Jesus. At this time, we're going to have announcements. Amen. Amen.